Hey, it's Greg Torres. Sometimes people ask me what's my favorite plant and it's hard to determine. But in the middle of June, right now, one of my favorite plants is this guy here. Now this is a plant a lot of people are familiar with, especially if you're living on the east coast of the United States. Anywhere from like Canada, probably down to like Georgia, Iowa. Now these are black raspberries, wild black raspberries. A beautiful native plant that produces these delicious berries that readily just come off from the the connection point here and you can see the sepals still remaining behind so it has a compound leaf and what that means it's got a leaf that has these three little leaflets on it and it's alternating on the branch so it's coming out here and then up the branch there's another leaf not opposite of the branch but alternating this plant and where it grows um, some people may think that it looks like poison ivy sometimes it can be confused as that especially when it's young but you almost always will find these thorns here these little prickles on here uh, this is a plant that belongs in the rose family this is rubus occidentalis now the raspberries the blackberries rubus as a genus is a very very large genus of plants I think there's over like a thousand members in its genus. It's widespread too, with a lot of species coming from China and North America as well. But the black raspberry is pretty common to find, especially in disturbed areas in the eastern deciduous forest. Oftentimes you'll see it on the edge of forests or along trails. It's usually got these round canes that develop like this, and they're round as opposed to blackberries, which I'll show in a second, which are generally square once they get older. And the berry structure is quite different as well. So this plant produces white flowers in the early spring. By June, this time in June, they're producing these berries. And if you pay attention to birds, you know, because at a certain point in their pooping season, the feces that they drop turns from white to white mixed with purple. And oftentimes, the birds are eating these berries. So some of the seeds that you might see in that bird feces might be from blackberries. And this is the main distribution method for this plant, to produce these colorful berries to attract birds. In fact, there's a mockingbird that kind of lords over this while I'm at work, <laughs> squawking and making a lot of noise, protecting this valuable food source. It also provides a nice little area for wildlife such as rabbits to hide out in. There's a whole study, a scientific branch of the study of brambles and it's called batology, B-A-T-O-L-O-G-Y, the study of brambles. Because there's so many of these fruiting plants, it's kind of useful for us to develop a science around how to cultivate them. And they can be turned into jams, jellies, eaten fresh, frozen. You can even dry them and add them to food later on. If you want to grow this for its fruit, again, which is absolutely delicious, you eat another. Um, raspberries, what they do is they'll form these long canes like this in a year. You can see it's actually up to six feet tall, quite tall. But as they grow, they start to bend down. And over time, they bend down all the way until they touch down onto the ground. From there, they root in. So old colonies of black raspberry, you can tell because you see these arching branches from several years built up to form a colony over time. Now, they only bloom and fruit on what's called old wood, so the canes from the previous year. So it's really important, if you're pruning these, to know 
which ones you want to prune and which ones you don't to have it actually bloom and produce fruit for you. I planted this extensive clump here and it goes all the way over to here and then back about four years ago from a few cuttings that I've got. This patch I created here produces about a pint or more a day for about a solid week and then peters out about over the next two weeks after that. You can layer this plant in, as I was mentioning, just by pinning it to the ground at a node or two and putting some soil over top of those nodes and it'll readily root in. And from there you can develop cuttings of your own, especially if you've got a good fruit producing one that you've discovered. It'd be a good way to get that same clone to produce more fruit for you in the same manner. Another interesting quality about this plant is that the canes, which appear right now to be quite light green and glaucous, meaning they got this covering over them, you kind of wipe off. It's like a waxy coating. But in the fall, they'll start to turn purple. And what I've noticed, it's kind of interesting, is as they arch the way they do, you get this whole arching habit of purple canes. And when it snows, you get this interesting di like color arrangement of purple cane, like arches over white, which is quite pretty. Um, and can be used, I guess, as winter interest in the garden if you arranged it in such a way. So there it is. I just harvested all the berries after that last segment there. And uh, yeah, so here's my haul. Lots of berries. You get the purple hands, which is fine by me, because these are delicious. I'll show you the difference. The blackberries are different than the raspberries, which I have here. Blackberries tend to look more like this. A little bit longer. I'll pull this one off. It's not quite ripe. This one maybe, no. But here, you can see they're a little bit longer. They don't have that kind of cupping like the black raspberries do. But sometimes they're actually called black caps, I've learned recently from one of my seasonal employees. So these berries here, they're kind of like a composite fruit. You can see there's a lot of little compartments to this little berry here, each one containing a seed. It's technically called, those are drooplets, a little bit of flesh and the seed around it. So this is my haul for today, and this is my raspberry patch, four years old, and it serves me a lot of great things. And the birds love it, and a lot of insects do as well. But what are the bad things about it? I won't lie, there are some. Uh, it can be aggressive. It can grow in a bunch of different directions and unless trained in a manner that you want they will just kind of keep taking over so they'll make a pricker patch uh, and sometimes it can be unpleasant to remove or to deal with later on so it's important that you do maintain it but it's fairly easy if you direct the canes to where you want them to touch down uh, it's a lot easier to kind of keep them going in the direction that you want but again remember that second year growth is where you're going to get the flowers and fruit so be be sure not to cut those down. In addition to that, it will send up runners and suckers underneath the ground and it can pop up a few feet away from the parent plant. So there's that. Uh, and of course, I think most people are familiar, you have to earn this, right? This is a delicious berry, but you have to pay a price. It's got prickles. It's in the rose family. So the thorns on it, or prickles rather, will dig into your skin. They're kind of recurved and shaped like cat claws. So once you get into it, it's easy to get in, but to pull yourself out sometimes is really difficult um, without getting scratched up. So it is that. But you know, I was thinking about this earlier today, that a lot of the animals, they exhibit some of their finest features when they're having to earn their food. And I think humans understanding the plants is, and how we can work with them is one of our finest features as well. And it earns us the food. So if it means that we have to earn it by getting scratched a little bit. 
I can deal with that. I think it's a delicious food. And there are varieties that they figured out to cultivate the thorns out. But as a wild food source, you can grow easily in your own yard that provides a lot of ecological services like raspberries.